virus may have persisted after his initial infection. Here's another one. The newspaper also mentioned a second case of sexual transmission from 08 in which a U.S. biologist was infected with Zika while in Senegal collecting mosquitoes for a malaria study. The biologist developed a rash, fatigue, and headache a week after his return to the U.S. His wife also developed similar symptoms a few days after his return and after the two had sex. Now listen to this part of it. Their blood was drawn, that's husband and wife, and both tested negative for malaria, dengue, and yellow fever. Well, time passes, and a scientific colleague suggests that their illness could have been Zika. The blood samples, which had been frozen, were then retested, and as suspected, came back positive for Zika. What does that suggest? That the wife was infected by her husband, since none of the mosquitoes, which carry Zika, were present in Colorado. What does that mean for the average listener? I think you can put two and two together. We'll talk more about it uh, next week, in particular about the Zika virus, because this is going to get big. It's going to get very big, and the government, of course, is many steps behind it and trying to cover up what they know needs to be done. And what needs to be done from a public health standpoint, it's a tough one, but they have to do it. They have to ban all travelers from Zika-infested uh, countries, meaning you go to the locus of infection, that's a standard practice in epidemiology, and you close down the source of infection. You don't let them travel here, for God's sakes. And also you curtail travelers going in and out of those countries. And if you have any suspicion that they may have been con contracted the illness, you have to do something else. And that word is anathema in America today. It is a Q word. Quarantine. There is a reason for it. And if you think it's a dirty word, you're wrong. In fact, during the last plague that we had from Africa, the Zika virus incidentally originated in Africa, uh, just so you know the origin of it. The last one we had, which was Ebola, they used quarantine. Do you remember? It's not a dirty word. It's a standard practice when you have common sense public health officials who care about the population. Back in a minute. not true. The pills my mother didn't give me, but that I took when she wasn't looking when I was in college, they were pretty good, to be honest with you. I mean, she didn't give them to me, but they did something for me back in the 50s. They gave those women pills. She didn't even know it. God rest her soul. She'd kill me if I said this. Kids do crazy things, I mean, when the mother's not looking. We come home from college early and we party in the house. <laughs> I was irresponsible. What can I do? I'm a wild guy. I mean, I'm a free spirit. And that is why I am a super borders language culture guy, because I really will tell you the third world threatens all of us. I don't want to live in the third world. See, I'm one of the weird Americans who never really wanted to live in Africa. I never wanted to live in Iran. I never even wanted to live in Mexico, to be honest with you. I wanted clean, potable water. I didn't want the federal police being able to pull me over and shoot me for no reason. Oh, wait, that, sorry, that just happened in Oregon. Okay. Oh, and the water, right, just in Michigan, dirty water. Police shooting people for no reason like an R. Oh, wait, the third world has arrived. I'll take that back. Well, in a certain way, I mean, although I never wanted to live in the third world, Obama has brought the third world to America. And so this is glorious to the liberals who all say that they're citizens of the world. And uh, soon they will see what they saw in Paris, and they'll say that Nixon did it. Yeah. All right, one pill makes you larger, one pill makes you small. And one pill does nothing 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 at all join the savage nation call now 855-400-SAVAGE 855-400-7282 savage warning the savage nation contains adult language adult content Psychological nudity. Listener discretion is advised.
And now, America's most exciting radio talk show, The Savage Nation. Talk radio for the thinking person, home of borders, language, culture. And here he is, Michael Savage. You know, he's an anchor baby. Ted Cruz is an anchor baby in Canada. But Canada doesn't accept anchor babies. They just waited a long time. Okay. But, but look, look, it is a problem for him, by the way. I think that's one of the reasons is he's crashing. I think that's one of the reasons he's a nervous wreck, too. One pill makes you larger, and one pill makes you smaller. Oh, Viagra, no less. Can you imagine? The ones that they were like psychic, the uh, Jefferson Airplane. Don't do anything. What drug do you have to be on to even care about this song? Remember the day of the psychedelics, people would like listen for the lyrics, the meaning. Who in the world has time to listen to the meaning of lyrics in a song today? No one. No, who, who turns to junkies for, 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 for knowledge anyway? No one. Anyway, here we are. Trump, Cruz, this one, that one, Jeb. Jeb, of, of course, attacked, uh, uh, as you'd expect, Jeb Bush attacked Trump. And kissed to be uh, the the skirt. I'll be very very classy, of the uh, of the Muslim blogger. How's that for a classy debate, Megan? That's really smart. Take a blogger with twelve hundred followers and make her a questioner on on the debate. I mean, what level do you have to fall to to people really find out that your petticoat is not as clean as you would pretend it is in that regard? Okay, the petticoat refers to the spirituality of this uh, organization. Oh, my God. I'm starting to think maybe I should try the tramadol that they give in Teddy. i got to squirt it in his mouth eh, for pain. Meloxicam, 1.5 milliliters. No, 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 sorry. Meloxicam, another painkiller. He's getting two pain medications and two antibiotics a day. Clavamax, gabapentum. I'm going to cut it off tomorrow. He's doing better. But he has a problem. I have to give him canned pumpkin. I never took care of an animal like this. When you think, here, yeah, Teddy, he knows I'm talking about it. I'm sorry. What would you like to talk about today? I, uh, I could talk about Zika. I could talk about Jeb Bush. They're about, about as interesting to me. I'd rather talk about the Zika virus <clears throat> instead of Jeb Bush. But if you want, I'll play a tape from Jeb Bush, who to me is about as interesting, less interesting than the Zika virus. Here is Jeb Bush doing what, the uh, candidates of that stripe do best, which is pander to anyone they think might might find them offensive. Here he is talking to a Muslim blogger that Fox had the nerve to call for a, uh, a commentary. I mean, it's unbelievably sickening. It's not that she's a Muslim. She has no following. What, 1,200 people makes her an important person? Listen to clip three. Mr. Trump believed that in reaction to people's fears that we should ban all Muslims. Well, that creates a, an environment that's toxic in our own country. Nabella is a rising entrepreneur. She wants to pursue the American dream. She's an American oh, citizen. Please. She should not feel uncomfortable about her citizenship. Oh, God. She's not the threat. The threat is Islamic terrorism. We need to focus our energies there, not these broad blanket kind of, of uh, statements that will make it harder for us to deal with, with ISIS. Now you know why the word Bush is synonymous with quizzling. When you say Bush today, it means quizzling, compromiser, sellout, milk toast. Used to say milk toast in my day. Casper Milk Toast was a character in a novel about a type like this. He didn't want to offend anybody. That's a Casper Milk Toast. And so here he is catering to some unknown blogger that was put on the stage in order to embarrass Trump. No wonder he didn't go on, that's all. Then, of course, Cruz, The Undertaker. If I were casting a vampire movie, I don't, I'm sorry to tell you, I read, I understand. I have a friend again, and a producer in L.A., a yeah, big deal. You don't, I do. And he said, I, I deal in images, and Cruz is not electable. He, he agreed with me by email. He said he's unelectable because of it. He scares people. He has sneaky eyes. He looks like a villain, he said. Women feel that about Cruz. He's got that creep factor. So here, let's put aside the creep factor. Let's deal with the issues of, of the day. Is this the Ted Cruz that you support? Listen to clip two. Donald Trump has chosen not to attend this evening's presidential debate. What message do you think that sends to the voters of Iowa? Well, Megan, let me say at the outset to the men and women of Iowa, thank you 
for the incredible hospitality over this past year. Secondly, let me say, I'm a maniac, and everyone on this stage is stupid, fat, and ugly. And Ben, you're a terrible surgeon. <laughs> now that we've gotten the Donald Trump portion out of the way, <laughs> Okay, very funny. It's it's smart. But you talk about a comedian, uh, a theatrical deliverer. How is that any different than what Trump was doing? Suddenly he found his nerve. All of a sudden he found a pair. Now he's got a great nerve. Cruz, suddenly there's no one there to compete with him. So he's, suddenly he's Donald Trump now. Now he's insulting everyone by pretending he's not insulting them, okay? He was saying what he actually believed. He is a maniac. And everyone on the stage is stupid, fat, and ugly. That's what the Democrats think, by the way. <laughs> uh, by the way, if you act, if you stop the average, I, I, I hate the word millennial like they're so important. Everyone, millennial, oh, the millennials think this, the millennials think that. Oh, oh, the millennials think this, the millennial, 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 that. What a dumb media we have. Who cares what a bunch of millennials think? I don't care what millennials think at all. They don't interest me whatsoever. Let them stand online and learn what to think because they don't know anything. They've been brainwashed their whole lives. What do they know? Nothing. They haven't even taken home, 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 home a paycheck yet. You know, let them get back to me after they've taken home a paycheck and see what's deducted or where it goes. Then you could tell me what a millennial thinks. Next case. Uh, Megan Kelly, the river dancer, kicks Cruz in the jaw. She didn't have Trump to kick around anymore, so she kicks Cruz now with a high kick. You have any you have river dance music? I think we're going to play river dance music, Robert. That was popular 20 years ago, 15 years ago. Where'd the river dance go? It was hot music in the 90s, and then all of a sudden disappeared. I think they still play it in old age homes in New Jersey. They bring the women in from New Jer from uh, Ireland to do river dance for the the poor people don't even know what they're doing. They think they're running from mice screaming. Cruz rips Chris Wallace. Okay, so clip six is a good one. Rather than five, while you're looking for river dance music, let's hear an interchange between uh, Celia Cruz's son and Meatball Jr. in clip six. Chris, I would note that the last four questions have been Rand, please attack Ted. Marco, please attack Ted. Chris, please attack Ted. Jeb, please attack Ted. Let me just say this It is a debate, sir. Uh, well, no, no, a debate actually is a policy issue, but I will say this, gosh, if, if you guys say, ask one more mean question, I may have to leave the stage. Oh, oh, he couldn't take it either. Suddenly he can't take mean questions either. Fox is no good. Fox News is what I've been telling you for five years they are. They're not good. They're not reliable. I mean, I'm not going to dent their, their ratings, not at all. But I've told you, how many years have I told you that about three years ago they started to move to the center and then they moved to the left? How many years ago did I first tell you that Fox has become CNN, that Fox today is what CNN was four years ago, five years ago? I told it to you before anyone else did. So now where is Fox? They're out to get the Republicans for one reason. How many different ways do I have to tell you the same thing? Rupert Murdoch, the owner of News Corporation, is an open borders guy. He doesn't live in the real world. He's powerful, he's smart, but he's slipping. He does not know what open borders have resulted in. All he knows is that it's good for those who want cheap labor, and they're on the same boards he's on. It's all they know, keep the factories and the hotels running. So he's for open borders. And there is another factor that I must mention, to be perfectly fair, and that is I believe 18% of Fox is still owned by a Saudi Arabian prince. And if you think that has no bearing on how they cover immigration and the Muslim question, I would disagree with you. Now, it could be that the prince sold a share. I, I kind of don't remember that. I don't follow it that closely. But they're interrelated in what I'm saying to you. There are, there are forces and influences on Fox News that you should be aware of. That's all. Do you have the river dance music yet? Still looking? Oh, now you can segue into, into Megyn Kelly as she kicks him in the chin. Senator Cruz, when Senator Rubio proposed that bill, creating a path to citizenship, you proposed an amendment. Mm -hmm. Mm -hmm. It would have allowed for legalization, but not citizenship. Yes, it would. Press last month on why you supported legalization, you claimed that you didn't. Okay, let's right, uh, like you just You did. see the, how she's savoring and setting up one Republican after another? Let the brave Megyn Kelly do that to Hillary Clinton. Let her take on 
the Queen of Hearts. Let's see how tough she really is. She's real tough on nice, 